So today we're going to turn this into something like this, a rabbit hutch, using this old cage. some of these excess uh, ties that we have, zip ties, just so that the rabbits don't chew on them. It wasn't a big deal with the chicks when the chicks use this as a brooder, but rabbits chew on anything and everything they can. And earlier I cut off the uh, tarp that was attached that you probably saw in the intro. Um, that we were using to give the, the chicks shade whenever we were using this as a chicken brooder. Um, but the rabbits won't need that. So. Looks like we're gonna have to replace some of these to make sure it's fully secure. One of the things that we're going to test because... Um, He'll be our engineer. One of the things we're going to test is the bottom of this brooder. Since it was being used as a chicken brooder, we had this upside down. So it wasn't necessarily as crucial for the bottom, um, with, at that time, the top, to be sturdy. But now that we're going to have rabbits in here, we need to make sure that the bottom won't push down as they spend time and their body weight presses on it. So what we're going to do for that let me just show you real quick, is we're going to push around the edges to make sure that none of the rabbit wire goes down below the frame because if it does, it'll sag, create a hole, and it can be a place for um, the rabbit's foot to push through or if there are babies in here, um, say it's a doe that has nested and the babies are hopping out of the nesting box, it could be a place for them to fall out of the cage and we really don't want that. So we're just going to go around the edge and check that um, as we are pulling off zip ties and wherever it is um, put, able to be pushed down, we'll add zip ties there. You can use wire, that would be more long term, but zip ties are cheap and quick and that's what we choose to use, especially when we begin this in the evening, in the winter, and the sun is going down. So. And we're also going to make this into three compartments. Thank you. Um, instead of making it into four, just to uh, make sure that the rabbits have enough space to, to exercise in while they're in here. That's why we aren't going to have these support frames uh, be part of what we're going to connect our wire to to divide this into multiple compartments. Because as Justin said, um, and as he made the point to me, this size right here is really small for the size rabbits we have because ours are a medium or large rabbit. So really they need at least a third of this space for a long time shelter. Yes. Yes, we will be sacrificing some stability for the top part of the divider wire, but it'll still be better for the rabbits in the long run. So yeah. um, I agree with Justin, that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and pull this off. And the cord she's about to pull off is one that we use to make this kind of a chicken tractor sort of thing, but to make it mobile. To make it mobile, um, but we won't need it as for rabbit cages. You got it? 
Big body, little arms. Another reason to cut off the excess on the bottom is so that the poop doesn't accumulate on it and create this big blob that you have to clean up all the time. We're going to work on putting these, uh, this cage, uh, cutting it apart and putting it as a compartments for this. And um, we don't want to use, or we want to use the sole cage because it's one of those things that it's just too flimsy to use as an actual cage and it'll be better to use as support in here. We're going to start by measuring how much uh, we need to cut out. So. so that just fit the sides of the rabbit cage. So it's going to work out pretty perfectly because we were concerned that we'd have to use the bottom. And since the, the top has a, a door in it, it would mean that we wouldn't have quite enough from this one cage to do our two dividing panels to make this a three compartment um, hutch. So, yay! We love it when things work out. Now we're going to disassemble so that we can have the panels to use for our dividing panels. <laughs> You're so funny. He's been taking off his socks and shoes and then putting his shoes back on because he wants his shoes on without the socks on. Right, sir? <laughs>
Now we're going to see if we can get three panels this size to be able to put on the three, um, three compartments. We were originally going to do all the way across with one piece, but we don't think we'll be able to get that out of that cage. And the reason we want the rabbit mesh on one side is that we need to put, um, at minimum, a rabbit waterer. And the chicken wire that's on the side of this brooder isn't going to be enough to hold the weight of a waterer, especially long term. But if we can reinforce it with this rabbit wire, that will allow us to be able to comfortably put a waterer on there. Also... Um, something that won't be for tonight, but maybe later on when we're ready to adapt it to have a free-flowing feeder or continual feeder, um, we'll be able to cut out a spot to be able to put the rabbit feeder in. Until that point, we can always put a bowl in. For us, it just is a lot easier and quicker to be able to pour feed in the front through the free flow feeders than to have a bowl on the inside that the rabbits will tump over and push to the back corner and make it really inconvenient for us. We have now gotten our three front panels cut out so we're putting them on the cage and we're just going to use zip ties anchoring them from the top to make sure they have a good sturdy anchor because the water and gravity will pull them down. running out of zip ties, so now I'm reusing some of that wire. Okay, so we got the mesh from the cage in front of the chicken wire so I can get the water on there and it actually does uh, fit without actually having any cut out for the uh, nipple to go through um, and then at some point we'll cut out an insert in here like uh, Simber was saying to put a pellet feeder in there for that. yeah Malachi agrees there's a quick and easy way to do a makeshift rabbit hutch frugal is good not only is this a frugal way to turn something used into something new and repurpose it but if we decide to discontinue doing meat pen rabbits at least to the scale that we're now trying to get to um, we can always disassemble what we've done today and turn this back into a chicken brooder. That was another good day on Cooker Gehoofed. And we'll see you next time. Hey, Cloud Hoppers. Thanks for watching the video. Push the thumbs up to like the video. Also, hit that subscribe button. Also, the bell so that you can get notifications when our videos come out. Check us out on our social media pages, too. We have Facebook and Pinterest, and soon we'll have Instagram. The links are below. Bye, y'all! Bye! <laughs> Good job.